Right, 12 week challenges. How are we? I'm sure you remember the, the mentors, Marissa and Andy. Hey. And um, they've uh, politely accepted to have a quick chat with me today about a few things about behavior change, a few things about the characteristics and, and traits of those who are in a position to make the best changes that they can. And the reason I brought them along is because they are, their careers are both, and they're trained as psychologists. And it's interesting for me to ask them these questions and pick their brains based on their experience and based on their learnings um, and see what their opinions are on certain things. And I think you guys will get a lot of value out of this. So maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> So, I guess um, I've got a couple of questions that I'm going to ask and we'll just flow with it and see what happens. Um, first question, and we'll, we'll hand it over to Andy first here. Um, if you were to briefly summarise, what do you think are maybe one or two keys to behaviour change? Yeah. yeah, look, I think that's a really good question. Um, I'm playing with a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it up nice and close if you want to. Know. I think the first thing that sticks out for me when I think about that is that so often when I'm working with people, I, I hear people talking about I'm just I need some motivation to get going, like you know, like it's yeah. a class, it's a sort of a depressed way of thinking. So I, I just am looking for motivation and I can't get going, yeah. and I think that there's a sort of a connection there that people think motivation equals action, mm. so that I just need motivation and then I have action. And I, and I think it's it's almost the rarity that somebody has the motivation prior to the action, mm -hmm. mm. and that actually what we find is that action leads to motivation mm. that then leads to action. Mm -hmm. And mm. so, um, so really, if you can just do something, that starts the motivation moving, and then that builds momentum. Sorry, I'm just um, putting my sunnies on. <laughs> <laughs> it's glary out here. Yeah, yeah I agree. And, and it, it's it's funny how that is. It's like, oh, if only I had that motivation. And, yeah. And anyone who gets anywhere with their health and fitness, yeah, I like. I don't know about you guys, but I'm probably motivated twenty percent of the time. Yeah, you that's know, right. Like yeah. actually motivated to go to the gym. Yeah. And then you sort of know that if you get to the gym, then the action will create that momentum. Yeah. For the motivation. That, that if you get home from work and you are like bone dry from motivation don't go for a run, go for a walk or, or just yes. start with putting your shoes on and, and give yourself permission to make it a smaller one. And, and if you had a little bit more energy on the walk, um, then maybe, yeah, you turn it into a bit of a job. But, yep. but it's better to do something than, than nothing. Exactly. And, um, and maybe, yeah, you end up doing a bit of a run, which is a good thing. It, and, and I see that happen so often with, yeah. with clients, especially like yeah. the start of the session, I'll be like, how are you feeling? And they're like, I feel so tired yeah, and yeah, drained yeah. Yeah. and then at the end of the session I'm like how are you feeling they're like I feel good yeah, yeah. you know and it's like there's never that regret yeah no one says I oh god I wish I hadn't done that workout yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um what do you do you, do you guys have any um thoughts on how to overcome because the, the toughest part of that is feeling so unmotivated mm -hmm. be prior to taking that action yeah. do you have any tips for like just taking that action yeah look, look the one that sticks out for me like i think there's a lot of research on willpower yeah um and basically they're saying that across the day we've got a certain amount of willpower and that we use it up across the day and so um if you're trying to do really challenging things at the end of the day and at that time trying to generate um you know like big things mm. that it's really hard to do mm. and so you have to make it easier to do and I, and I think this is what I really like about your goal setting at the start that you know in, in psych language we talk about smart goals you know mm -hmm. specific measurable attainable realistic time bound goals so having to um, rather than a more general I need to exercise more mm -hmm. it needs to be I'm going to exercise on Monday Wednesday Friday at 5 30 it's going to be a group class it's going to be 45 minutes mm -hmm. um, and so you know in terms of what you're saying there if, if you get to the end of the day and you're then deciding, well, what's my exercise going to be? I don't think yeah, you get out you, there. You've already sort of... You've already made... You've got a, a barrier yeah, you, there. Yeah, you need a lot of willpower to now yeah. generate, well, what am I going to do? You know, Thinking like, about yeah, it, is like it a run? No, yeah, yeah like, maybe a run, yeah. maybe, yeah. Whereas if it's, uh, well, gosh, it's Monday and I made a commitment to 5.30 gym class, 45 minutes, then I guess 
you know, like, I guess I'll just do that. Yeah. You know, like, it's an, it's a harder decision to not do it. Sure. Made a commitment. Yeah. No, no. And, and there's, there's an interesting thing um, in regards to motivation or, or commitment versus motivation. Yeah. And this, this thought that in order to do anything, I need to have motivation to do it. Yeah. It's like, it's that, that switch in, or, or that thought in the brain to acknowledge that I'm not going to be motivated all the time, but I've made a commitment to do something. Yeah. And although every emotion in my body doesn't want to do this, yeah. um, it doesn't mean I can't, yeah. you know? And, and that, that ability to sit your emotions aside for a second and be like, okay, I, I'm not like bedridden sick. Yeah. I'm not running to the ground exhausted. I just don't want to do this right now. Mm. Overriding those emotions and, and saying, okay, I know you're there, but I'm going to choose otherwise right now yeah. and just get to the gym. Yeah. Like, I think that's super important too. Yeah. Yeah, as we talk a lot about um, thoughts, feelings and behaviour all hanging together. So it's often, you know, we're talking about behaviour and behaviour change. But really, when you're thinking about it, it's easy to think, well, this happens and then that creates that behaviour. And we're looking at a very behavioural level. But if you kind of can pull that apart, sometimes it's even happening at an unconscious level, those thoughts, feelings and behaviours sure. hanging together. So it might be, you know, the behaviour is I ate a bit of cake and... The thoughts around it might be, oh, I had some cake, you know, and, and the feelings might be, oh, I'm really disappointed, feel like, you know, I've made a, um, I've, I'm a, you know, haven't, haven't I've, met my I've goals. Up, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, yeah. <laughs> and then what sorts of things are going on at a feelings level there? Sure. Probably not a lot of motivation, yes. feeling pretty disappointed. Yep. And then beating thoughts that might, up, yeah, and beating yourself up is yeah. probably a bit more around the thought stuff. So sure. it's coming back to you know the thought, and they're all bouncing together these thoughts and feelings and behaviours. Yeah. The thought, the um, thoughts there might, and it can. This can go deep. Like people sure. can go from eating a piece. I ate a piece of cake sure. into. <laughs> Um, you I'm, know, the, I'm the biggest piece of shit in the <laughs> yeah. world. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm a failure. <laughs> I'm, I'm fat. I'm unlovable. Yeah, you know, yeah. it can go just. And how's the how's the feelings in yes. that now? You know, so negative. Yeah. And, yeah. and what do you have any recommendations or advice on how someone could maybe reframe that cycle, or even or even cut the cycle and prevent that from happening? Because I see that happening a lot. You know, it's mm. like I had a piece of cake. They think on it for about 20 minutes and they're the worst person in the world that's ever existed yeah. and I should, you know, just quit now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think the biggest thing is just an awareness and I guess mm. that's why it's sometimes helpful to talk about that model and visualise that model happening for yourself because the awareness creates a bit of space mm. to make different choices around it. So if you're recognising after, I ate a piece of cake, oh, I wish I hadn't done that feelings, I feel disappointed. If you recognise at that point, rather than at the point of, I'm a failure and unlovable, sure. then, it yeah, before, then you so. have an opportunity to, to be a bit conscious in how, well, you know, maybe in reframing, I suppose, so maybe, you know, that's not the worst thing in the world. It's just a piece of cake. Look, you know, Marissa this week has done three workouts. Marissa <laughs> last week, you know, <laughs> wouldn't have been doing that. Yeah. So in the scheme of things, you know, a piece of cake is probably not the worst thing. How's your feelings now compared to the last scenario we're sure. talking about? Well, probably a little bit, feeling a little bit better. And then your thoughts might be a little bit more around, well, how about I just put my shoes on? Mm -hmm. I'll go for a little walk around the block to kind of repent for my cake eating ways. For sure mood might be a little bit proud you know you That's, might be starting to and it's just short circuiting that because exactly. you can intervene at any point you can yep. intervene at behavior um, by taking some action and that's sure. generally you know one of the easiest points to intervene you can intervene at the thoughts like i did in that example around how do i reframe this um it's very hard to intervene at the emotion level yes, so if you intervene where... at the other two then it helps to feed mm -hmm. yeah. and even i as you say that it reminds me of ways that i intervene at the behavior point like if i really want a piece of cake i think okay and and it's that thought's just not leaving my brain yeah. i'm like okay so i really do want a piece of cake what a, how can i make this a, just a little bit healthier than eating a big piece of cake okay i'll that's a piece of cake i want i'll put cut that in half and I'll eat the half of the cake. And automatically making that decision to be a one step a little bit better than you would have done yeah. puts you in this loop of um, positivity. You yeah. know, it's like, I made a really good decision there. That's Whereas normal, yeah, exactly. And then it, it doesn't derail yeah. 
everything to that point where you hate yourself, you know? Mm. I think the other thing that sticks out for me, if, if you, um, I really like both of those examples, and it's talking about how thoughts get in the way. Mm. One simple sort of approach that we use is, um, what would I say to a friend? You know, yes. like it's, it's a way to short circuit. Well, I'm going to get out of my beliefs and think about, you know, what I would allow for somebody else. And mm. if somebody else was saying, bring that up a bit. Um, you know, like, uh, I, I had a piece of cake, I'm a worthless piece of shit. You know, yeah. you, for somebody Jeez. else, you'd be saying, <laughs> what, exactly. ha- hang on a second, mate, it's just, a, like, I would have had the cake as well. You, know? you, you um, wouldn't have many friends. You know, <laughs> I, yeah, well, you're, you're a piece you're of shit. shit. That's you're right. Piece of shit. You're, you oh, you cake eating. <laughs> and I think that's, that's it's true, though. Like, if, if you wouldn't have many friends, and, and so you're not actually being much of a friend to yourself. Yeah. Um, and and so, that's huge, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I, that's a big thing um, about, I did a video recently of, stop talking to yourself like you're a piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, that was yeah, like yeah. the title yeah. of it. Yeah. And, and it has to do with that exactly like, how many people would you talk to the way you talk to yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, if, you're, if you're someone who's very critical of yourself. And yeah. no one, you would, you would be ashamed and appalled at yourself yeah. if you talk to others sometimes the way that you talk to yourself. Yeah. So. And thinking about, well, so what would I say to a friend? It, it probably starts to recruit some of your normal helpful problem solving like yeah. well, you know what i'd say is yeah okay you had cake today but why don't we just go for a you know an extra hill run, you know like yes, or something like that exactly. and, and so mm. it can just flick you into a different mindset of being solution focused rather than problem focused yes yeah. and that's a, that's actually a good um sort of segue there like there's a lot of this um view that exercise is is to escape from a problem or you know like i i don't want to be fat so i got to exercise or i don't want to be fat so i need to eat this salad rather than thinking of the solution like i want to feel good yeah so i want to oh, i'm going to eat the salad or i i really want to get fitter and be more mobile and, and feel better so i'm going to do this exercise like there's a it's a subtle but very important change yeah solution base rather than focusing on the problem and just really i guess getting in the, into that cycle yeah, so. yeah we, we would sorry so oh go for it man. um i mean just yeah you can have any conversation with somebody and if if the question is um so what do you not like about yourself or what are you bad at versus sure. um where are your strengths what what you know what are your values just how one will be a, a you know an energizing conversation and the other one wouldn't be and i think mm. that, exactly that's just, yeah mm. Cool. I just, um, I was just thinking about when you're talking about that. What would you say to a friend? Like, I think it's really um, helpful to think about us as being. And I think I was making this comment on someone's post. I think it was Loz's post yeah. last night around being the um, um, custodians, I suppose, or sure. almost a parent role to ourselves. And maybe the parents um, in the group can relate to this a bit. But um, that. It's a really big responsibility. You know, no one's got your back other than you, really. Yeah. I mean, lots of people have our backs, but ultimately it's a, it comes with a lot of responsibility. And so um, thinking about how do we value that and be a good parent or a good friend or to however ourself. it's helpful to ourselves. Yeah. And I really like um, the model that comes from parenting, um, from the circle of security-based um, stuff, and it talks about being bigger, stronger, wiser, kind. Um, and so if we have too much, you know, if you think about bigger and stronger on one side of the balance scales and kind on the other, and wisdom is knowing how to manage that balance between bigger and stronger and kind, um, if we have too much bigger and stronger without the kind, then yeah. that's where you can get that really mean to and yourself, what, what, negative What would stuff. be like bigger and stronger? Like, what would it be an example of oh, being bigger and stronger. Yep. Well, it might just be about, you know, it's not just all, you know, if you have too much kind, that's just, yeah. you know, letting yourself so kind of wallow. So kind would be like, eat that whole cake, that's okay. Eat the cake. You've eat had the whole pizza. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you deserve it. Yeah, you, know? it's, yeah. you want to have nice company with your family. Go and have, you know, go and have pizza out. Yeah. And that's really a lot of kind. Having the bigger and stronger is also saying, yeah, but love. I've got, you know, my cardiovascular health and, you yeah. know, I need to also be the... the, the um, thoughtful parent and make sure yes. that we are keeping ourselves healthy and or yeah it's really important to go for a walk and and think about our general fitness so it's the wisdom is being able to balance sure. both of those things in that yeah, yeah. yeah i really like that model um 
and it's I think a lot of people are very good at being the bigger stronger and not very good at or or, or they so, or, the opposite. or the opposite yeah, <laughs> yeah, there, yeah there's yeah. no balance yeah. there's no balance yeah, yeah it's it's very much one way or the other yeah. either you're you're doing everything really wrong here um you or, or like cab comes to mind if i'll bring someone to mind <laughs> if, uh, he he holds very high expectations for himself and and he explained this in his reflection um how he really holds these high expectations and if he doesn't reach them he deems it a failure and he, and he really fucked up and these expectations are so high and to counter that he creates even bigger expectations yeah. like oh so I didn't lose weight this week and even though he exercised really well and ate really well and he's like okay so next week I'm going to have to like fast a couple of days or cut my calories even further yeah. um, which is like not sustainable and ends up you know really having a negative effect and then beating himself up more um, whereas I know in the past I've been very kind, like overly kind to myself, like, and I'm sure many people can yeah, relate yeah. to that. Or even at different times. Exa yeah. yeah, exactly. And and finding that ability to be empathetic and under and and understand when you need a break or you you may need a rest, yeah. but also knowing when you're justifying that break or rest undeserving undeservingly, I yeah. guess. Yeah, like it's it's striking the right balance about having self compassion. Yes. Which, um, but also, with that comes a, that the bigger, stronger is also well. You also have other values which are, you know, to lose weight, to be healthy, to you know, mm. and so that um, so that it needs to be the, the full balance there. That, yeah. That if it is, um, and not speaking about Cav, but like, <laughs> but if somebody only motivates themselves without the kind. Um, you know, you're not building. Where where do you end up? There's never a, a place of actual um, acceptance. There is. <laughs> yeah, know, exactly. Like, you're never um, you're never gonna have a a win. Yeah, you know? it, it, yeah. And you see this a lot with um, with people who are you know by any standards like exceptional, exceptionally yeah. athletic, yeah. And, and that they still. I mean, this you know, and in a really significant version, it's called body dysmorphia. But sure. but but actually, most of us can probably relate to parts of this where you you know picking parts of your body and being a bit critical about it mm. and, and I think if the motivating force has always been do better be better not good enough then um, you know that, that that's the part of your brain that you've been strengthening along the way sure. rather than the part of your brain which is um, a growth mindset but not expecting perfection so yes. um, so and it's it's interesting um, it's, it's interesting to see and I see I see this in you two sometimes too that bigger stronger to yourself holding really high expectations but you guys are really good at balancing it but with um, myself in the past especially I've always had bigger stronger as the dominant one yeah. and if you're not like it, it really takes away from your joy and from your fun from the fun yeah, yeah. of everything like especially health and fitness like if you're making some amazing progress and you can't sort of sit back from time to time and acknowledge that and like sit in that the fact that you've fucking done something really yeah. cool and relish in it, relish in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it and if you don't have that opportunity to do that ever yeah. like where's the motivation to keep doing it you yeah. know yeah, that's right. other than to beat yourself up more and just be more unhappy yeah. you know do better be better <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah that's an interesting thing there um maybe let's have a look at we got off track here. No, I think that's, that's all awesome. That's all awesome. In your experience and based off your learnings, what are some common traits or mindsets of those who successfully change their behaviour for the positive? And I think we've gone into a little bit of that. Yeah. 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 Look, I think um, if I'm thinking about sort of some of those qualities, I think the two that probably come to my mind. One. One is obviously persistence. Mm. Um, that you don't, it doesn't need to be, um, you don't need to be an expert, you just need to be persistent. Mm. So people who have a bit of... And consistent. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, if, as long as, you know, it's the sort of, that's a, the difference between a perfection mindset and a growth mindset is perfection mindset is, and, and often we romanticise this, we think, oh yeah, I'm a perfectionist and that's a good thing. Yeah. But actually what it seems to be is that I have an idea of what, of what things should look like to be perfect yeah and anytime i don't get there i have I've failed, failed. yeah whereas a growth mindset is um i will always try my best i will always you know and anytime i don't get there it um i will use that information to try and 
to an learn and, and, yeah, to and, and, yeah. and so persistence then is, well, I'm just going to keep, yeah. keep like, you know, relentlessly just progressing my goals and I guess the times that I come up short are just meaning that I need to realign my goals mm. yeah. going forward. Either, either it was unrealistic yep. or I can make some changes to do it better yeah, next time. That's right. Yeah. And, 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 and not kind of being tapped into I'm I a failure, failure. Yeah. give up. Mm -hmm. And what I like about persistence as well is that there's that you, you can't you can't fail. Yeah. Like you can't fail. If you persist, yeah. no matter how many times you fall off the wagon, like you're gonna get there yeah. eventually. Yeah. And and that overlaps a bit with I think patience yeah. is a big one. Yeah, yeah. Um, that comes with persistence. Yeah. Mm. And that resilience mm. of being willing to being willing to fail yeah. and knowing that you probably will yeah. fail. Um, but yeah, learning from it yeah. every time. Yeah. And the other one we've already touched on, but that's self compassion. I think yes. um, you know, I think that one if, if we're talking sustainability yes I think that one um, has to be there and in people who I see um, doing really well like a sort of who are really you know excellence in their field I think they have a self-compassion where they're yeah. just backing themselves and you know you can't do as long as you you know you can do no wrong you just yeah. you just always trying your best yeah and, um, and that stands you in good stead and though I uh, just sort of touching back on um, bigger stronger kind of wiser yeah, yeah, yeah. that's sort of yeah. all of the top people in, in their fields seem to have that balance there and yeah. self compassion is necessary like you can see some people rise very quickly yeah. um, but if they don't have that self compassion they can't sustain it Yeah. so that's huge like, and, and you know we see this a lot that we, if somebody then becomes injured you know exactly um, right and, and so they they were doing really well you know and, and so then it was you know it was um, feeding into all of their bigger, stronger. Like I am do progressing, mm. I am doing my goals, but suddenly I can't. Well, yes. if then, then what you need is a, a skill to be able to go. Well, it's understandable that I can't keep functioning at that level. You know, like it would be unrealistic to think I would. Mm. So if somebody doesn't have that kind of compassion to know that the circumstances have changed, yep. yeah. then they're vulnerable to just you know be a failure. You know, yeah. to feel yeah. like they're a failure. Or push yeah. through things they should. You know, yes. when you have a week where you're not feeling well. If yeah. you don't have enough of the kind, yeah. and you just have the bigger, stronger. It is mean, you know, to push yourself to yeah. the point of burnout. To, to burn out, yeah. 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 Right. yeah. And that is interesting. Like you mentioned, the two persistence and self compassion, and that almost is like bigger, stronger, in a in a different way, which yeah. is really cool because you can be. You, you have to know when to be self compassionate, yeah, rather than be persistent, yeah, um, which is exactly what you said, like. There's a there's a video I released called Two Steps Forward, One Step Back, yeah. and it sort of is pretty much exactly the same thing. Like mm. you have to understand that if you keep making progress forever, like if you want to keep losing weight forever, eventually you'll disintegrate into dust. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so so there's a point. Which is not the end goal. That's not the end. Like <laughs> okay. I don't know if that's yeah, yeah. if that's someone's goal. I don't know. It could, if it is, just make progress forever. You're doing well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, like there's a, there's a point where it's normal to. Um, not make progress and yeah. in fact it's required yeah. Yeah. to make long term progress you need periods where you're not making yeah. progress mm. called maintenance <laughs> called maintenance and in fact like this is a weird mind, uh, like mindset switch is periods of non-progress actually is progress like yeah. that yeah. that is part of the journey yeah. and to think you just need to be losing weight consistently all the time is is when you think about it is stupid yeah like you will end up being dust yeah. like it, it's it's not a real thing yeah. and, and I know says we've had conversations in the past about um, like why it was so important for you to be doing the more sustainable program that you're running now versus you know there's a lot of um, weight loss 12 week or eight week mm. things that um, that you that that there's so many times that people go in a really like um, you know, massive way for a short time, but then they put the weight back on, and it's basically because the mindset wasn't, didn't allow for the maintenance Absolutely. phase. Like, I only know how to lose weight, I don't know how to exactly just kind of be at that weight. Exactly, you know? yeah. and in fact, just just having maintenance is a loss in up yeah, here. yeah, oh, and it, yeah, and it shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah that's right. Mm. Yeah, cool. Any thoughts on that one, Marissa? No, I think nothing beyond what we've cool. talked about. Yeah, and. We'll touch on the last question here. What are some methods or tools for people to assist in changing behaviour patterns? Um, such examples being thoughts of 
not making enough progress. I guess we touched on some of these. All or nothing thinking, mm-hmm. seeking food or alcohol for coping. Like, do you have any thoughts on tools to assist people to step away or, or out of those, I guess, long-term self-destructive thought patterns? Mm. Um, look, it's not a... Maybe it's not a direct... Um, kind of linked to that but I one of the things that stuck out for me when when you put that question forward was um, was actually about it, it was it's about sort of how you're thinking about yourself and actually trying to build a capacity around being grateful yes um, sure and and I think it, it does relate but so there's a lot of research around gratefulness and being grateful um, is you know it builds things like happiness and yeah. self-compassion yeah um, and so if you're talking about a technique, you know, putting, making a commitment to write down one thing that you were grateful for in a day, yeah. um, I think starts to build another capacity um, in yourself, which when you are talking about reaching for food or reaching, you know, like for um, something to kind of feel better about yourself, you've, you've got another capacity, which is, well, you know, another way to think about your body. You know, like I'm sure. grateful that my, um, I've seen somebody who, who, is not healthy, and that they have, you know, that they have to spend so much time looking after their body through medicine. I, I can be really grateful that I can actually go on a program like this, sure. and, and to use it, my body carries me throughout the day. Yeah, and, um, that, that, that's an interesting thing as well, related to gratefulness and gratefulness of your body yeah. for, for for what it does. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's I find sometimes this can this can work in food selection as well yeah like i'm so grateful for my body and its mobility and what it does for me yeah is eating this cake going to assist my body and and how it functions yeah or my brain and how it functions Mm. if not sometimes yeah sometimes it's you want that indulgence and it's actually healthier for your body and brain to do that yeah but more probably more often than not it's not and just thinking about your body and how it will affect your body with that gratefulness as the uh sort of center of it yeah it, it helps you make wiser decisions because yeah. because when you're grateful for your body you want to treat it right and you want to feed it mm. things that will help it yeah you know mm. and so you tend to reach for foods that will enhance your body yeah. rather than be toxic to your body so mm. i really like that reframe away from kind of image and worth being attached to image around your body to yeah, the function of my body mm. and how important it, you know, carries me through life and how do I be the biggest, stronger, wiser, kind um, custodian or parent of that vessel and, yeah, that's a really nice... Yeah. And the gratitude is such a nice tool to do mm. that. Yeah. Um, we talk a lot about um, sort of... That if you think about it in terms of headwinds and tailwinds, mm. we are geared up evolutionarily to be focused on our headwinds, the obstacles in life, sure. because that's how we progress, is to recognise and work our way through them. But we often forget to think about the tailwinds. What are yeah. the things that are pushing us along? Yeah, sure. And gratitude is a way of being more conscious of what are those tailwinds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is, yeah, I don't know, maybe my mind's going in a funny way, but I, I think with both of what you were saying, and I like that tailwind sort of side of it, that um, thinking about, this is a real global perspective, but how how grateful I could be for how much privilege we have having access to so much food. Oh, yeah. You know, like that yeah. in terms of our, Australia's average um, salary, it puts us in 95, in the 95%, you know, wealthiest people in the world. Sure. And so just the, it's such a funny thing when you think about that, we're spending a lot of time working at how to not eat such rich food. <laughs> yeah, or how to consume as much as we can and yep. but still be at, uh, you know, this ideal weight. Yep. And yeah, than- sort of as a side note to gratitude that I've really noticed, and I know this is a, a popular um, way of increasing happiness, uh, that a popular tool that you guys probably have given to your clients in the past, is the gratitude journal. Mm-hmm. And um, that's, I guess, where you, you write down every day three things that you're grateful for just sort of as you were talking about either little things or big things or a combination of both and I have for me personally and this might not be for everyone but I notice when I haven't been filling out my gratitude journal like I feel like there's a bit of a an energy about me that's like I'm a little bit heavy or a little bit like 
victim-y or a little bit angry yeah, and yeah. it's like a little bit less grateful like, <laughs> a little bit less grateful exactly right and it's like um it's so interesting how gratefulness correlates with i guess happiness but but like so many positive traits and for me it's extremely noticeable yeah. um and that's just sort of a side note yeah, yeah, i guess yeah, yeah. 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 And I think it's really helpful, like you're talking about little things or big things, it's really helpful with gratitude to start small sometimes, mm. particularly if you are feeling a little bit rubbish. You yeah. know, it can be as simple as the beautiful breeze, sea, sea breeze here on our skin. You know, it can be something so um, simple um, and it builds momentum around noticing things yeah. that you're grateful for. Yeah, we, I mean, uh, we had a, a, in one of my workplaces, we had a, in our team meeting, we would have to talk about the win of the week, which was, mm which was really, you know, one thing that went well or you're grateful for. And at the start, it was sort of like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> All this right, okay. Yeah, and like... then, and, and I, you know, like that was me as well. And then, but, and what I noticed was, you know, at the start, it was kind of like, oh, all right, what, what's my win going to be this week? Um, you know, like here, oh yeah, this went well, you know, like I'll put that one forward. But then what it did is it shifted that mindset of like, you know, having a breakfast and everything. This is the best breakfast. I'm going to tell. This is going yeah. to be my win. And I've then had so many wins. This yeah. Week. And then and then and then I got the whole way to work and no red light. That'll be my. And so <laughs> yeah. then it started a mindset of like looking you for noticing. noticing. Yeah. Things. And it's I, like a muscle, I guess. It's like anything. That's right. That's yeah. Yeah. Way. Yeah. The way we think is, you know. Yeah. Built in the brain. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Um, I was going to say something else there. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, and that sort of that sort of transitions over into um, back just just really quickly touching back on the bigger, stronger, and kinder and wiser. Is sometimes it seems if you're really heavily in the bigger, stronger, sometimes it seems almost like weak or or petty or or silly to sit in your wins and yeah. acknowledge what you're grateful for. Yeah. You're like, well, if I'm gonna be if I'm gonna fucking lose 20 kilos in 12 weeks or whatever you ex like ridiculously big goal is yeah. um, for someone who is bigger stronger they're probably setting ridiculously big goals yeah. um, that acknowledging small wins along the way seems weak like self-indulgent self, exactly self-indulgent yeah. and it's like well if I'm going to achieve this I can't just I can't just like appreciate where I am right now yeah. you know and, and it's five kilos isn't 20 kilos <laughs> exactly right and, yeah. and so one thing that I've noticed for me especially that I've worked on a lot probably over the last six months is really really acknowledging those small wins because when you are grateful for the effort that you put in and the, and the where you've come from and how how far you've come um, it really motivates you to do more and it and you really enjoy the process a lot more yeah. and and um, appreciate yourself a lot more and it all links back into a lot of what we talked about self-compassion it allows you to be more persistent without um, burning out and and a key key thing that I try to drive into everything is joy experience joy if it's not joyful it's not sustainable ultimately yep. so yeah yeah and, and you use the word um, all or nothing thinking before yeah. like and that's that's exactly what you're talking about there you yeah. know if everything is all or nothing I'm either having a healthy day or somehow I, like I had a muffin at morning tea and then that means I'm having a like I'm a not having day. I'm yeah. having a the bad day that's there, it and, and you, therefore get Maccas on the way home exactly you know? and you, I guess that means you're either happy or you're sad yeah. and there's no middle ground and there's there. no error for life happening there, <laughs> yeah, exactly you know like, right. um, whereas if it's sort of you know if every minute is a minute by minute thing like say there's no bad days good days it's mm. just like I you know do what I can when I can yeah then you've got a lot more room for growth really yeah, yeah. 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 cool mm. nice um, any, any any final notes, guys, before we wrap this one up? Any final thoughts or recaps or important points that you think are very important to take away with? Um, I think the main one um, probably that I'd encourage people to take away from it is to, if thinking, we've talked a lot about the bigger, stronger, wiser, kind model, um, thinking about where your dominant side is. Are you mm. someone where your, bal your balance is naturally tipped to be a bit bigger and stronger and then it's maybe your kind muscle that you're having to focus a bit more on or is it that you're someone that's a little, you know, tipped in the mm. kind side and maybe could be a bit um, bigger, stronger at times um, because that is the wisdom. So th recognising where the, where the balance is tipped and trying to um, build the muscle on the other side. So important, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, and for me, I, like I like sex. How you say that this is um, this is the first twelve weeks of going forward. It's yeah. not not everything, and I yeah. and I think that's that's really important. That you know you don't want to put pressure on the experience to have everything. You know, like if you're wanting sustainable, then I think it's about doing the best you can in this time, recognizing that it's a really great opportunity to to put things in to place and be reflective, um, but that you don't have to. You know, any time you're not doing that is not a sign of failure. It's a sign yeah. of learning. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a sign of growth. Exactly. Yeah, have um, a play with it in the yeah, day. Yeah, that's right. Try different things. Yeah, it, it, it is. Make it a bit of a game. Like yeah. I find that makes it fun. And yeah. if you, if you can do no wrong, like if you're, you know, treating it as an experiment, there isn't anything you can do wrong. Yeah. Mm. Uh, any time that you don't quite nail it, then that's the opportunity for growth. Yep. Yeah. Then then you actually can't fail. You know, like it's only yeah. a yeah. positive experience. <laughs> and and I think. Uh, like the only other thing I'd say is that it just seems like a really nice group and I see yeah. a lot of people um, like I'm continually impressed by people who uh, who work shift work who have children who like who live further away from the city like I mean we're very lucky that we we can we've got a lot of um, things that make it very easy for us to do this yeah. and, and so the fact that people kind of keep cracking on with things I think is awesome yeah, yeah like, absolutely so, yeah nice well Thanks a lot, guys, yeah, well, for, for this. this is, uh, I'm sure um, the group will get a lot of valuable stuff out of this. Uh, I've got a lot of valuable stuff out of this, oh. too, so thank you so much. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. All right, see ya. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Yeah. That's fun. It, it is fun, yeah. Relaxed into it. It's